Hey there! Today we're going to be talking about some really cool behaviors in honeybees. Let's get an introduction so we're all on the same page. Honeybees are important pollinators for a lot of the foods that we eat, so it's important to make sure that they stay healthy. Honeybees live in colonies, which means that individuals live really close together. Unfortunately, that means when a disease or parasite gets into the colony, it can spread really rapidly. The organization of the colony can help though. For example, the queen can usually be found near the center of the colony and surrounded by nurse bees. Foragers live near the entrance to the colony. They're the ones that are more likely to bring disease or parasites back because they're the ones that travel out to find food. With this organization, it's more difficult for diseases and parasites to infect the queen and nurse bees because they aren't as close to the hive entrance. Behaviors can also help. The colony can improve their defenses through something called social immunity. These are a collection of behaviors in social groups that can help decrease the susceptibility to disease or parasites. One example of social immunity is social distancing, which I'm sure you're familiar with because of the COVID-19 pandemic. There are four behaviors in bees that researchers think might be related to social immunity. The first are foraging dances, which show other foragers where to find food. The second is allogrooming. This is a form of grooming that removes and kills parasites on other bees. The third behavior is called attenuation. This is when bees rub their antennae on other bees to help recognize nestmates. The last behavior is trophallaxis, which is where one bee gives food to another bee. So, researchers wanted to know how do honeybees change their behaviors when there's a parasite in the colony? So let's talk about what the researchers did to investigate by looking at their methodology. The researchers did two different experiments. In both experiments, they had bees and or hives that were infected with parasitic mites and compared those with ones that were uninfected. The researchers filmed the bees and looked at space use and those individual behaviors I mentioned earlier. In the first experiment, the researchers constructed artificial beehives with honeycomb frames. Some of them ended up infected naturally with the parasite and others did not. The second experiment involved caged bees in the lab. They compared bees that were purposefully infected with a parasitic mite with those that remained uninfected. Now let's talk about what they found with some results. Overall, the researchers saw that social distancing increased between nurse bees and foragers. For the artificial hive experiment, they saw a couple of things. The biggest was a change in forager behavior. So I'm gonna show this in a graph because it's really easy to see the change. So here on the y-axis are the number of forager dances and on the x-axis we have uninfected and infected. In orange, you can see dances at the center of the hive, and in blue, you can see dances at the outer edge of the hive. So it's easy to see that when the hive was infected with the mite, the foragers danced more on the outer edge of the hive. Another thing they saw in this experiment was that nurse bees were closer to the center, which means that allogrooming behaviors increased towards the center as well. For the caged bee experiment, the researchers actually saw increases in allogrooming, trophallaxis, and attenuation. This meant that the nurse bees actually interacted more with each other, which surprised the researchers. So what does this all mean? Let's discuss. Well, it seems that colonies on the whole increase their social immunity in response to parasite infections, but individual bees don't. Bees that are the same age, for example the nurse bees, don't seem to social distance. This could be because it's costly, but it could also increase care between individuals, which might help fight the parasites. The researchers think that social distancing in the colony might be limited because it's harmful overall. For example, when foragers shift their dances to the outer edge of the colony, they might not recruit as many other foragers to collect food, which makes it harder to feed the colony. So what does this mean at a larger scale? Let's get a conclusion. There are two big ideas here. One, social distancing can be helpful, but it's also hard. There's lots of examples of it in the animal kingdom though, so it's probably more beneficial overall. And two, bees are really important for humans. You can help create healthy bee habitat by planting bee-friendly gardens or even constructing bee hotels for wild bees. Hope you learned something today and have a good one.